Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. I forgot to go uh, in the middle of the day just to remind people. Yeah, but it's okay yeah. though. I mean, I feel like um, they saw us Saturday, so. What's up, Christian? Yep. Um, yeah, yep. So, yeah, it's all no, good. No, that's fine. Well, welcome back to 2019. In case you forgot, it is a new year, yep. which means it's a new car audio talk with me and me. That's right. And we got some fun stuff for you today. In case you guys didn't know. Jamie from Dallas, what's going on, buddy? Title Masters on Android. Sean. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got a title. I'm playing with title, title right now. Right. I had a good cool. deal at the end of the year. Great Alpine DSP earlier. Thanks. What's um, up, Greg? Which was funny. So real quick, for those of you guys that were up early Johnny. this morning and, and caught the first release of the, the part two video that I was so excited about. I, I, I spent like hours yesterday editing in it. And this isn't a joke. It was like mm -hmm. five and a half hours yesterday yep. editing in it. I was like, it exported it and all that, and yeah. when we shot the video, there was a part where the SD card got corrupted, so there's when we're going to the router to router out the base, for some reason, the SD card and the camera got screwed up. Yeah. So, I imported it, and there was spot, spots in it where there was no video and sound was mm -hmm. dropping out and all that. Well, I tried to turn it into a time lapse. That whole time lapse corrupted the whole upload, so at five and a half minutes, yeah. it stopped the upload, yeah. and then said done and I was like oh great it's done so then I put it on the internet and this morning I get up and I see there's you know a bunch of people saying something happened and I was like ah. well I, I saw it yeah. and I'm like okay yeah. what's going on so now on? I gotta yeah. jump out of bed and uh, cuz I put it up at 530 and then I, I, I sleep until 8 8 815 uh -huh. and um, so, you know, between two, yeah, anyway, so you guys can do the math. Not ¿Qué tal, Alex Delgadillo? So, the, um, the Carl. stupid, I had to figure out what it was. So, for the next 20 minutes, getting ready and yeah. trying to reboot and do all this, I finally figured out what it was. And then, thank God, the, because I'm, of course, freaking out. I'm pissed yeah. beyond belief. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, I put, I, I grab my laptop, I finally get it to export, and mm -hmm. it's exporting fine, and then I got to drive to work. Okay. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to waste any more time. So I put my phone in, in share mode. Yeah. So I'm uploading the video while I'm driving to work with the <laughs> phones, the laptop sitting on my floorboard, my phone, and I'm uploading as I'm driving here. Uh, like it was, a cop. It was wonderful. Yeah, great. Yeah. So that this morning being a Monday really, really stunk. Hey, Juan. So we want to thank you guys for coming back onto the show, for enjoying your holiday weekends. If you caught the Saturday show, we kind of... We all had a great time. We all hope you guys hope had a you great guys time. Had a good, good New Year's. And yep. we couldn't talk about a lot of the stuff that we know. So for those of you that aren't in the know, the CES, Consumer Electronics Show, is happening this week. This is the win. A lot of the companies uh, hold all their cool announcements and say, hey, look at us. Now, some of them went ahead and did it this year at SEMA. So, for example, Rockford Fosgate, who is going to bring us Saturday's show. So we have some stuff to talk about there. Yep. Um, we didn't want to have them sponsor this week's show because we're going to talk about a lot of other brands. So they're going to be our sponsor Saturday. Uh, they brought out Amplified Boxes. So if you guys are familiar with the P300 10 and 12 that we pimped so much because if they sound really good, we put one in Haley's car. They've actually expanded that line because oh, yeah. it's doing so well. And they only have two SKUs. So now they have truck boxes. So mm -hmm. they, they have a P300 uh, 10 and 12 truck box. That's a T. Because this it's the a T, T for truck. is for trucks. And yeah. then they also have an 8-inch. Mm -hmm. And then they're coming out with, that they, they just announced, is they P512 ported enclosure. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to take it even further. So uh, Saturday we'll show you the truck boxes because we have those to play with and show you. So we'll show them to you. Eventually we'll be doing videos on them as the year goes forward. And then they also came out with a Bluetooth steering wheel control remote. Now, they're not unique in that, but it's a Rockford, so it's kind of cool. So it wraps around the steering wheel control. It's got a Velcro uh, strap, yep. and it allow you to volume up and down, track back and forth. It's the PMX BTUR. 
Um, so if any of you guys are interested in that, really what it's designed for is if you got one of those cool uh, UTVs or ATVs or whatever where you're putting it right in the dash and obviously they don't have steering wheel controls, you, you can do strap this thing this. onto it. Yep. You know, so that way you don't have to be like, Mm -hmm. You can just grab it and do it right yep. here. And then for those of you that like maybe in Fernando's car and soon to be my car where we just want to stream from our phone into the amp. What's up, Mel? What's up, Mel? Uh, I will be live tomorrow at Amps. Nice. Secret location. Ooh. Wow. Win. Secret location. Win. I want to know. Um, so anyways, that's that from them. So we have a, a, a sheet from others. Mel, we're going to talk about Metro right now. I'm sorry because <laughs> I, I didn't get a list from you guys. So... Um, now, what we're going to talk about today is, uh, before we get to the questions, we're going to answer questions in a little bit, yep. is we're going, to, we're going to talk about what we know for sure. So yep. this whole week, we're going to be getting information. We might go on later on in this week and, and do a recap. Um, we might just hold it all till Saturday. We don't know how we're going to play it out yet. Uh, we're going to have, hopefully we'll have John Schneid on the show, which is half of our brands we'll have bill on the show which is the other half of our brands right and we'll talk about the new stuff for 2019 with right. all those what's up ernie what's up ernie um, what's up victor so victor i wanted to talk to him today about something hello i don't remember what it was um damn i, was, I wanted to talk to you about, about the something. new radio that he's gonna buy <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, Jason. What's going what's on? What's up, Jason? But so happy well, new year, buddy. Yeah. Hey, everyone. So, oh, if, so the, for those of you guys who didn't catch the <laughs> shows that we did over the holiday season with Jason, which is Fro's house. Thank. I want to thank him. We had a great time. He did. A, it was awesome. Um, he changed the way we did the shows. Uh, that was so good. It was nice. Yeah, that it was, was good. It was a nice edit, so that was a lot he of fun. He opened the shows. Yeah, so that was that cool. Was so we had a really good time. We hope you guys enjoyed those. So back to what we were saying. We're only going to talk about the stuff that we have 100% confirmation on. Like, we know this is fact. Um, so we're going to talk about that, and and then we'll talk about more as we get more information. So we're going to start What's out up, with, Bismarck? with Metra. So, uh, Paul, I'll keep making it, yeah. or I'll just Facebook you. Hey, it's Bismarck. What's up from Modesto? I was wearing his shirt last night. Um, so Metra, for those of you that have a Chrysler or a Ford that has the stop-start feature, that's so when you, like, you get to the, the stoplight, the motor shuts down, and then you, it starts back up, I find so annoying. Um, they're going to have what's called the AXSSO which is the start-stop feature, so for those, it'll defeat them. So you'll be able to in install this piece and defeat that feature. Uh, hopefully they're gonna evolve it into something for GM because I feel they have more of those and they're equally as annoying. Mm -hmm. So for right now, it's just a Chrysler and Ford. And then they're coming out with three new DSP products. So if you caught a review on the DSP, they make their DSP. Um, and it was a first generation. They're mm -hmm. coming out with more iterations of that, which I'm really excited about because uh, of the last one. The first one is going to be the DSP-X, and what that's gonna add is 10 channels of output. So instead of just having eight, it's going to have 10. It's going to add a bigger crossover package, obviously, because you'll be able to do um, active three-way set up front and all that. They're going to add the DSP-WR, which is the water-resistant version of the X. So if you have like a motorcycle mm -hmm. and you wanna have a big DSP in it, you'll be able to have a water-resistant DSP, and I think it's gonna be one of the first standalone DSPs that'll have that. And then they're coming out with a DSP Lite. And this is the one I was more excited about because the problem with the DSP is what if I wanted to buy their interface and then I wanted to add someone else's DSP to it? The DSP Lite is gonna solve that problem. It's more of like an Amp Pro style system um, where you just are gonna have RCAs. You still can plug it into a Windows-based laptop if you wanna do some minor adjustments uh, for like time correction, it says. But other than that, it's going to be just preamp level output. That's awesome. <sighs> Thanks. It's Camaro. Camaro. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, so that's that's what we know from Metro right What's now. What's up, Bobby? Um, Alpine, in, in case you guys, did, we talked about these briefly. These nuts in the house. In case you didn't catch the show on Saturday, we briefly hinted about products they're coming out with. Mm -hmm. uh, the big one is going to be the ILX F259, which is going to be the more inexpensively priced version of the Halo. It's not going to replace the Halo. It's not replacing the Halo. It's coming in below prices of the Halo. So you're going to get a more inexpensive version of it. It's yep. still going to have a capacitive touch screen. It still looks like it. The operating system is a little different from more affordable the pictures it's just gonna be more affordable so yep. that's awesome moving on from that we have the INE W550 which is gonna be a seven inch touchscreen two inches deep 
So they're bringing back that two inch Jeep short yep. chassis double din. Really excited about that. It's gonna be CarPlay, it's gonna be Android Auto. It's gonna have a retail price of 450, which is great for Alpine. And like Johnny's talking about there, the power pack for it is gonna be the KTA 450. And what that is gonna be is because it's a short chassis that's only two inches deep, it's an amplifier that 50 by four that attaches to the back of it, making yep. it a normal depth of a double din, but now you have a real amplifier bolted to the back of it. So if you have a normal dash that can take a full size deep radio and you want to have real 50 watts by four on the back of your radio, you can now add their, instead of getting the brick 455U, you can now add this power pack and it comes with the bracket, so it makes yeah, it into yeah. one whole mount, mount, and it, it looks really slick. Yeah. There again, a lot of the pictures for these things don't exist, so if you're watching this tomorrow, or which would be today on YouTube, and you're going, why don't you guys put up pictures of stuff? Because they don't, a lot of them don't exist. Not yet, not um, yet. We have like, like someone like took pictures Screenshot. of them, and like, hey, you know, so we know that. Um, and then if you're a new Jeep owner and you have the JL Jeep, this is a big surprise. I know Alpine is going to have their radio for the JL Jeep. It's going to be the I-209 WRA JL with a whopping uh, price tag. Sorry, John. Right now, price tag is at $2,500. Hmm? I was kind of shocked by that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I thought it was a bit much. Um, but <laughs> hey, whatever. It comes with a lot of pieces because they're replacing most of the stuff in the dash. Who knows? Yeah. You know, Alpine kind of cool. lowered the price on it. Cool. It looks really nice. Yeah. Now let's talk about the other demon in the room. Let's talk about Pioneer. I'm kidding. I just. Now Pioneer did give us the most information. So if it seems like we favored them, we didn't. They just gave us all their information. We're like, here. There you go. So we're going to talk about Pioneer for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, uh, might not show up until March. Yeah, most yeah, exactly. of the Alpine stuff is going to be March release date. None of this stuff is actually available yet. Like no. I said, we don't even really have pictures. We do, but not good pictures. So um, most of the stuff will be releasing in March. This is just stuff they've announced. So don't plan on buying this stuff tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, here we go. So Pioneer has new NEX radios. So like the 24 series, the 14 series are all being replaced by Big surprise, the 25 and the 15. <laughs> so we're gonna have a 24, or I'm sorry, a 2500 and a 2550. 15. We're gonna have a 1500, a 1550. What's different about them this year is, is a big difference and mainly in that seven inch. That seven inch is going to be gone. They're going to replace it with a 6.8 inch non-motorized unit. So the buttons are moving from across the bottom to the side, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be a disc load through the top at 6.8 inches, yeah. so we're not gonna have this anymore. Yay! Um, so non-motorized faces all the way around. Uh, we're also introducing two new pieces. So that's the end of that, moving on to the next Pioneer mm -hmm. news. We're gonna have two touchscreen external brain boxes. Think of like a halo, little different though. It is a one inch thick, monitor with a brain box. Not really made to be mounted like a finished product like the Halo from what we can tell. It's made to be put into a dash kit mm -hmm. that is gonna be specifically designed for either a 6.8 inch, which is the DMHC 2550 NEX, or the eight inch, which is gonna be the DMHC 5500 NEX. Now all these are going to be capacitive touch, not crappy clear resistive, they're gonna be shiny black. Mm -hmm. They look like, and they're gonna be an inch thick with an outboard brain box. Now, they're gonna come with a 0.3 millimeter, meter, 0.3 meter cable, but you'll be able to buy an optional uh, 1.5 meter cable set for 150 bucks, uh, so that you can then put the screen here in the brain box wherever you want within yeah. like three and a half feet. So that'll be really cool. Personally, I feel, there again, they should ship it with that cable. I mean. My guess is it's Pioneer. Uh, if the thing moves, they're probably going to move on to that, and yay, that'll be yeah, that'll, that'll be the included feature. Yep. Um, now, when we're talking about the kits, they've actually teamed up with Metra, and sometime this spring, Metra is going to release probably about the time this radio ships. Metra is going to release a whole bunch of dash kits specifically designed to work with this radio. I'm sure once Pioneer updates their website, they'll show you the kits that are coming out. From mm -hmm. what we can tell, most of them are like pickup trucks and stuff like that. Yep. Um, and none of the smart dashes. So something like a Ford F-150 won't have it because it's not a smart dash. Okay, uh, Robert, <coughs> uh, real quick. Uh, for you, 2013, just check uh, packaudio.com. 
and they're gonna list the amp pro for your car that will be the best thing you can do thanks ernie i wonder who i got it from um <laughs> Oh, since Ernie mentioned shirts, if you guys are interested in new shirts, I'm going to put up pictures of them later today. We have two yep. new shirts that we just put up on Teespring for 2019. Yep. Um, they're pretty <laughs> Jason, cool. What? Jason said that I missed Kingwood. Uh, no, you didn't. We're getting there. Slow it down. <laughs> Slow it down. Um, so now also, because, hey, you know, when we're looking at nostalgia with Pioneer, you have the 4000 series. So there again, we have the 4400 this year. It's moving on to the 4500, 6500, 8500. Mm -hmm. Now I want to say at this point, this is weird that they're actually announcing this stuff right now because most of the time they wait and tell us about this stuff in April. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that they just got bought out by a company uh, and it's no longer Pioneer Japan. It's going to be Pioneer China or Shanghai, whatever you want to call it. So Pioneer is under new ownership. They're working on that deal right now. So a lot of things have changed. But one of the big things that we could see, and this has always been my complaint with Pioneer, is that they've gone ahead now and in the list for the features in the radio, they finally put on there mm -hmm. that the units are dual core CPUs. They've never mentioned this before, but now they're telling us that those units, which are the better units, have a dual core processor built into them with two gigs of memory. And then depending on what type of unit it is, meaning with nav, without nav, it's gonna have anywhere between four to 16 gigs of flash drive. 16 yeah. would obviously be for the navigation. Um, new thing they also have this year is gonna be the Weblink app. Now, they're not alone using Weblink. That's going to be a feature that's also going to be available on Kenwood. Weblink is going to be used to control things like, Alexa, turn off the lights. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so that'll be on there. Now, a couple oddball things that Pioneer is also offering this year is going to be, it's called the uh, uh, CalAmp slash LoJack. Basically, it's going to be an OBD2, which I always, I'm dyslexic when it comes to that thing. Uh, OBD2. Uh, tracking device, you're going to be able to jam into that thing and allow you to track your vehicle from a smartphone app. Uh, they're going down that road, I guess. And then also, this is cool, they're also coming out with all new amplifiers. So the 9605, 4, 3, 2, 1, all mm -hmm. those guys are gone. And they're coming out with new versions. It's going to be like a 97 something, obviously, because 96, 97. New version. Okay, yep. new version. New layout, new design, ground up, rebuild, high res audio on the 4 and 5 channel. Ooh. And on everything but the 5 channel, get this, everything but the 5 channel is going to be one ohm stable per pair channels. So the models will do one ohm and the four channel amp, according to this, will do one ohm times four. You can't bridge it, but you can have one ohm on each yeah, channel. It's, it's like 125 by four at one ohm, something weird wow. like that. So then they put it a big one ohm per channel. Like, wow. So that might be neat for a lot of you guys to do like loudspeakers, you have a small footprint amplifier that puts out a lot of power at yeah. lower ohm loads. So that'll be neat. Um, also, they're going to go ahead and introduce the smartphone tray series Singleton Radio. We kind of joked about it, so yeah. it's going to be a Singleton Radio. It's actually available over, uh, in other Country. areas right now. So it's a Singleton Radio with a tray for your smartphone. Okay, that is going to be called the SPH-10, oh, hold on, where's that at? SPH-10BT. Uh, SPH yep. So that'll be that. Um, other things they're coming out with is a new 10-inch shell mount speaker that's actually going to be 10 inches instead of 11 inches like the current model. That sucks. Um, <laughs> so they're going to come out with a new version. Uh, right now there's no listing for a 12, so I don't know if that was a typo or they're just not going to have a 12 this year. Uh -huh. But they are going to offer a grill for it. It's a full mesh grill that covers the whole speaker, so that'll be really cool. Uh, they're going to have two versions of it, a 2 ohm, a 4 ohm, and a woofer in a box. Uh, they're also going to have... Uh, yeah, I said that, that. Oh, they're also going to have new marine products. So yep. they're going to go ahead and conform will coat those amplifiers, conform will coat some of their car audio radios, and make a new version of their speakers. So we'll have speakers, amps, and radios in the marine line for Pioneer. That's going to be much later this year when they release that. Now, Kenwood. Yeah. Kenwood, uh, there again, numerically, these Japanese companies just love to just move things up. So we're going to go to the 9606 and the 996. Uh, and there's also going to be a new uh, Mechalis unit, non-DVD player unit that's going to be in there too. I don't remember what the model number is. It They told us this about four weeks ago, so my notes on that are quite sketchy. Um, we'll know more as time goes on in the next couple days. There again, I'll, I'll get more information on Kenwood. Um, 
The big thing that they're announcing with that is there again, it's gonna have that web link thing and also it's going to be CarPlay Wireless. So if you're an Apple fan and been waiting, mm -hmm. there you go. You're gonna get your CarPlay Wireless in your Kenwood. They already have Android Wireless for you guys that have those five phones, rock on. <laughs> um, the new amplifier so coming you? out with new amps. So if you have a, if you were a fan like me of the 801.5, X801.5, the cool little five channel, put them in everything, uh, countless pictures of them, that's going away. 906, thank you, Jason. Yep. DM906. He DMX. would know too. DMX. DMX, like the rapper. Woo, woo. Anyways, um, I always think that when I see DMX. Wow. Cause yeah, it's DMX, man. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah, yep. so the X series amplifiers are being redesigned. Now, the one thing that's gonna be unique about those is they're going to wires all on one side. So right now, the current amplifier, you have power here, you have signal here. It's gonna be like they're more XR, it's gonna be like the XR series amplifiers where all the wires are gonna be on one side of the amplifier and they're putting bass knobs uh, in the box as well as an option. So, yay, that'll be cool. Finally, Kenwood's figured out that we want bass knobs on amplifiers, which is funny because really on their radios, you don't need them, but you might not be using it with their radio. Also, that is cool. Yeah. moving forward, we're also gonna get a six by nine inch mid bass from them. Mm. Yay! So we're gonna get a six by nine inch mid bass from Kenwood and the Exelon series. My guess is they're also gonna have one on the regular line. And paired with that, they're gonna come out with a two and a quarter inch driver, as well, a two and three quarter inch driver, as well as a three and a half inch coaxial driver. Wow. The two and a quarter inch is gonna be what they call the uh, high frequency to mid-range, so okay. it's going to be uh, designed to go up in the dash of like your Toyotas, Chryslers, and stuff like that, that have the high frequency mid-range in the dash, and then a 6x9 mid-base in the door. Mm -hmm. The three and a half is going to have a coaxial, so it'll be a tweeter, a three and a half, and you'll be able to add the 6x9. You'll be able to buy the 6x9s in kits specifically designed to go into those cars, as well as buy the two other three and a half and the 2.7 in a standalone option. So if you just want to put a Two and a half in mid range and something. There you go. They will be excellent. <laughs> I don't um, think never gonna do that, Mel. What's that? Uh, okay. When they manufacture put the units on clearance. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um. Well, you know, hey, it's what it is. Six <laughs> point inch mid base about time time. Well, okay. So also on the Alpine, and this is one of the things we couldn't confirm one hundred percent, but we're pretty sure they came out with them because we did have a conversation and we got a yeah, of course is the R-Type should also be coming with the six by nine inch mid-base tweeter combination to finish out the line. Because mm -hmm. last year, or 2018, we got the S-Type six by nine tweeter, we got the uh, X-Type six by nine tweeter. Supposedly this year we're getting the Rev, we can't 100% confirm it, so I didn't want to post it, but we're pretty, we're about 95% sure, which leaves us a 5% error, we can say, we thought we were wrong, yeah. um, that you're gonna get the R-Type six by nine tweeter this year too. Um, moving on, we talked about Rockford already. Uh, and the only other thing we have to talk about is with Kicker. Um, there again, we know this. It, we talked about it briefly on Saturday. If you watch my trip to, uh, <laughs> if you watch my trip to Kicker when we were in the sound room and we were, we were talking with them and I do a quick pan around to show you the front of an L7 woofer. If you notice it slightly, it's not as deep as a standard L7. That is because it is an L7 shallow mount driver. Mm -hmm. So they are coming out with the L7 shallow mount driver. Don't expect to see that anytime soon. We're still looking at probably March on that one, but we will have that. So uh, that I think is going to be really cool. So you'll be able For to. For all put... these people, they actually want an L7 in a the truck. Yeah. There you go. Uh, as far as Phoenix Gold goes, I don't know yet. Um, I got an email today. I haven't had time to really go through it. They did already announce a lot of the stuff that they were doing mm -hmm. already. So they revved the amplifiers early. Um, we don't know, Christian. I don't think you're going to. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about with them because mm -hmm. they just did a big rev a month or two ago. Yeah. So that, I don't think they really kept anything under the, the shirt there. I think their big push uh, is going to be the radio mm -hmm. and the capabilities of that radio as a standalone unit and being able to go into other cars. So that'll yeah. be fun there. Can't find those little end caps because they're butt connectors. It's a, yeah, those are tough butt connectors to find. It's a 18 gauge butt connector. Um, but if you if you go to a local stereo shop and they are I think even Metro has them now you should be able to get them from your local stereo shop have them order you a bag of 100 uh, if they're 
they're amp dealers. Amp's who we oh, get yeah. them from. Mm -hmm. So that's Pack, Best Kits, all those guys. They make all that stuff. So that's you should be able to order them from your local stereo shop. If you're having such a hard time that you can't find them, by all means, give Paul a call, and he will ship you out a bag if you want to pay for them. Correct. Simple so as that. Sounds like Alpine had the most exciting news on head units. Um, yeah, and we're expecting to hear more from yeah. Alpine. Yeah. Um, it's also just a, it's just a from, timing thing. From Kenwood too. Yeah, but know? as far as exciting goes, I, I mean, exciting is like. It depends. Like, okay, so we were talking. This was the, the point of the show on Saturday, which mm -hmm. is the point of the podcast that's going to come out in a couple weeks. Is um, what is more important, to you guys? Sound quality or being able to have Alexa turn on and off your lights when you're driving home? It mm -hmm. seems like a lot of people want Alexa to be able to turn on and off their lights at home. I myself don't care. Ernie probably would because he's into full home automation. He has lights <laughs> turning on and off and cameras <laughs> everywhere and, and curtains probably opening and closing and, and dishwasher probably turns Flush on the, the garage. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, you know, so, I mean, you know, that's, that's, uh, that, that, that would probably be more his style. Yeah. Um, but for me, I would much rather see like a DSP go into a radio or something like that. Oh, that would be um, amazing. Yeah. Idata has also announced some new stuff they're coming out with. Mm -hmm. um, there again, we're going to wait a little bit as far as 100% confirmation. We do know they are coming out with a Camaro kit. It won't be till sometime in March. Yeah, we're going to um, wait for Morel too. Yeah, Morel gonna, is going. We already know what Focal did because we had Nalika on. Yeah. They came out with the uh, M. M series. Stuff. Uh, yeah, so the not, Utopias. not from my car. No, because you have the cool factory radio with the magic box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that magic box is something that uh, is, yeah, they need to move that magic box. Even now, my DSP video. It's already there, yeah, man. Say there's part it's, one and two are out. We're not going to get any more out of that because yeah. I don't have anything else to talk about. Um, yeah. Uh, but, Dean, you have, you have to get Alexa to turn off the compressor. That would be smart. That, nah, that wouldn't be bad. Actually, it's funny. This year, we bought a, uh, to turn on and off the Christmas tree. I got some okay. generic thing that Haley yeah. could control from yeah, her, yeah, I remember from you, her you, thing. You yeah, so she was, yeah. she would like, she'd get up and go, like, you want me to turn off the tree? Thoughts on the Sony worth it? GS920 VH. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I believe I know what that is you're talking about, but I really haven't done too much uh, research on the Sony stuff. No. Uh, if Ada was still on, he'd probably be able to tell yeah, you because he probably, I'm sure yeah. he probably, knowing Ada, he probably loves it because it says Sony, and he's a big Sony fan. I will say this about Sony. Sony now, right now, in car audio, they make great stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. um, everything they make is definitely not what it used to be, like in the Explod days. Um, they make really good stuff, and welcome to 2018. <laughs> yeah, I know, actually, uh, exactly. Um, so I, I, I would I would not have any issues buying anything Sony right now. I, yeah. I feel it's good stuff. I was actually toying with the idea of getting their, um, uh, you can use Alexa enabled power sockets. I know, but there again. Um, I buy enough crap from Amazon. I really don't feel like I need to do Alexa. Maybe we should. Maybe that's what we should do. We should do all Alexa here. Turn on the router. Uh, okay. Alexa, turn on router one. Ooh, that would be fun. Um, uh, M series going into my new secret build. Well, there you go. So Ada is a big fan of it. So if Ada likes it, Ada is from Absolute Electronics out yeah. of Maryland. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and then of course we keep seeing Fro pop up here, and he is from Stereo Kings out of. Um, Oregon. Bingo. Yeah. All right. All um, right. Okay. 2002 Dodge Ram with Pioneer Head Unit using the pack uh, CP2. Which ground, which ground wire do I use? It has two in the yes. harness. Yeah. Twist them together. Okay. Use both. It has two grounds and it has two yellows. Um, I know on a lot of the newer harnesses for those, they've gone ahead. Yeah, I'm still here. I, yeah. Uh, I have Google Home Mini, and I can't have... I know on a lot of the new versions of the harness, they've gone ahead and attached those two wires together on some of the older versions of the harness that haven't been revved. There are still two rogue wires laying around. Um, but yeah, just twist them together, solder them together, whatever you want to do, use them both. Um, the RX Jet is the bee's knees. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. about doing, was getting one of those for the car. Yeah. Um, that way I could just sidestep all that crap. That would be cool, man. Um, you know, and my... Well, because Robot, this is a perfect size for one of this. Okay. Hey guys, what should I do about my engine noise after installing an amplifier and speakers and a bass tube? 
Um, no two yellows. Okay, so it's just two blacks. Twist the two blacks together, you're good. No two yellow. Okay, so um, first thing, just check. Um, yes, it is, Mel. Check your grounds. Uh, Always check your grounds. Yeah. Grounds are usually okay. Things not to use as hi Jen. Things not to use as grounds. Hi Jen. Don't use a seat bolt. No. Uh, make sure you've sanded the paint away. Yeah. Um, don't screw it through the carpet. Yeah. Uh, Try to use a really nice set what, of RCAs. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, um, and then if worse comes to worse, like you can't figure it out for anything, go ahead and pick yourself up an SNI one noise filter. Mm-hmm. See yep. if that helps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, usually it's just you know there again digital multimeter. Put it on the power and ground at the amplifier. See what it is. Compare it to the front. See if it's even close. If it's off a lot, then you know you might have a bad ground. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thinner right. ground for the, uh, it's an analog car that needs. Oh, so there you go. So ground them both. Um, in case you were wondering, Ernie works for Amp. He is the head of tech support. He's been on the show before uh, last last month. So yeah. uh, if he chimes in with an answer for your question, do it. Uh, it saves us time. Um, it's grounded. It, it, is it grounded in the kick panel? It's grounded in the kick panel? What? Oh, he's being funny. Oh. <laughs> or by a ground block. Okay, Just what do you got? Blocks. You got another uh, one. Okay, hang on. I think... Okay, while well, you're looking, I think I've blown my tweeters of passive crossovers overpowering. How can I check which? Okay, a uh, nine volt battery. So what you can use to test your tweeter is a nine volt battery. It's low enough uh, amperage that it won't blow the tweeter if you haven't already blown it, but you can take your tweeter out of the dash and tap it to a nine volt battery. If you hear a tick, 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 then you know the tweeter's good, in which case if you're not getting any sound through the passive crossover. Now you could also take a digital multimeter, set it to AC, play sound go to the output side of the crossover while it's connecting and if you don't see any movement then you know you're not getting any sound through that passive crossover you can also meter the tweeter and with it set to ohm and see if there's any ohmage but if you physically want to hear if it's making noise because not all speakers blow the voice calls and are blown by tapping it to a 9 volt battery you can hear the sound from the tweeter all right, uh, this is from Brian. I have a newer Albion head unit. It does, but it works, so yes. Yeah, okay. So I have a newer Albion head unit. Can't remember which one offhand. Albion type S speakers, six by nines and five and a, five and a halves. Okay. And one of the Alpine inline amplifiers, the KTP45A. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I hear absolutely no difference between running the inline amp and running the speakers directly off the head unit. Okay. Where's your experience with the inline amplifiers? All right, I so here's some kind of improvement. All right, so here's the difference between the, let's say, okay, so the, the question is I have an Alpine radio with a the, the brick amp attached to it. Should mm -hmm. I notice a difference between, a huge difference between playing it with and without the brick amplifier? And the question is, yes, but not where you think you're going to hear the difference. The difference is at the higher volume. So if you get in your car and you're a guy that plays it at 15 all the time, you're not going to notice a difference because at 15, they're putting out about the same amount of power. It's not until you get higher up into the volume where your factory amplifier is going to drop off and that other amplifier is going to keep rising. So that's really where you're gonna notice the difference because technically they're both the same amount of power on paper. It's not until you get to the higher volumes you're gonna notice that that outboard amplifier is louder or not necessarily louder, but will keep going all the way up whereas your factory one won't die. So that's probably, if I was to guess, that might be where the problem is there. Um, there was a question I wanted to answer, hold on. All right. Keep going. Uh, what will more radios offer wireless CarPlay? Um, when that technology becomes more affordable. Because you gotta remember, right now in order to do wireless CarPlay, you have to have Wi-Fi built into the radio. What's that? You have to have a radio that has a VSS wire, which is vehicle speed pulse. Uh, it's basically the transmission puts off a digital, or well, the data bus, is telling the radio how fast it's going. Apple has made that mandatory. That's why Kenwood didn't have wireless CarPlay last year. So 
realistically, yes, we are going to be getting more wireless CarPlay because Kenwood is now going to offer it. So all of Kenwood's line that was going to have it, which is their high-end radios, top two high-end radios, are going to now have that. But it's it, and it's expense because if you look at let's say the price point between a 2440 and a 4400, that difference in price, along with the 4400 having a better audio, bigger chipset, and all those other things, a lot of that is the Wi-Fi they had to build into that and rebuild the radio mm -hmm. to add the VSS because it didn't have it last year, so or didn't have it in the 4200. So there are a few things, and there is that expense. So right now, basically what we're doing is we're driving down the price of CarPlay and Android Auto wired, mm -hmm. and then the rest will follow suit. But I mean, how cheap do we need to make it? All right, I think I blow my Twitter's old passive crossovers overpowering. Yeah, we talked that. Yep, yep. okay. Move on. Uh, let's see, you already answered that. The background is bolted to the seat. Uh, I'll see if I can do that, Shane. That's a good idea. So put up a link for uh, base blockers. Okay, I'll see if I can do that. Maybe I can link to something on um, Parts Express or something. Um, definitely go for another ground. And like we say, it's trying to clean the paint of the car. So you got really nice metal. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. You know, that's a good question. Is this Pioneer and Kenwood RT about the same as flat? Now, okay. And I love that question because I would have argued no, they don't, but yeah, they do. Um, so when we were swapping radios out of the Camaro, when we went from the Alpine to the Kicker, I'm sorry, Alpine to Kenwood to Pioneer, as we moved through those, there was a significant sound difference, meaning they sounded totally different. I was like, there's, there's got to be something going on here. And that's where we were like, all right, let's hook it up to an RTA. We'll play paint noise and see what happens. And for the most part, they they, they were all flat. It just was yep. like nothing. And we're like, how could that be? Because they sound totally different. Mm -hmm. Totally different. It's like, and, and if you play, you have the same set of speakers and you play a Pioneer, you play a Kenwood, they sound totally different to me. Playing Alpine sound totally different. And we used to call that the salt and pepper that the manufacturer would add to the radios to make them sound totally different. So. Sound-wise, they seem to be putting out the same thing. Now, I don't know if that changes once you put a dynamic load on it, such as a speaker and that amplifier, what it's capable of doing, because we didn't really measure it with a, with a load on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that load from that amplifier is, from that speaker on that amplifier is where we're getting that sound difference, mm -hmm. but there is definitely a sound difference. I, I just, we didn't see it. So yeah, yeah it's really weird. Because uh, I always, my rule of thumb is if you own a Kenwood and you're happy with a Kenwood, buy a Kenwood, same with Pioneer. Whatever you're used to using, buy that same radio unless you're just so ticked off with the way that radio works, then you can change brands because sometimes that sound difference is so noticeable that it's like, I hate this. And it's like, okay. All right, I'm going to run a JL Audio 1001, 300 by four and 112 W7 sub. Power in uh, with the XS power, the battery. D345, 3400 uh, in the front and the secondary for the D975 under the seat. My question is, this is enough power? Is it? At the body, is, yeah. I mean, I we never work with the, I, I mean, personally me, I never work with the excess power. It seems like the body, this is they oh, yeah, are they large make, they enough make really nice batteries. to, um, yeah to handle that, that power that you have. Uh, as far as your Logic 7, um, what should you, uh, I would check Nav TV, uh, Nav TV, nav-tv.com, nav-tv.com, and see if they have anything available for you on that. Uh, you can also check out MoBridge. Um, they may have an interface to allow you to replace that Logic 7. So those are the two places you'd wanna go to check that. Um, hey Dean, what about you put in a link on the DNL? Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yep, yep, okay. yep, yep. So, let me see. Pro audio speakers and a slingshot. What are, okay, pro audio speakers and a slingshot. You know, that's funny. Like, we did the slingshot, we did it with marine speakers, uh -huh. and we went with those big cans in the back. He had those big um, audio, the, the, what was wet sounds yeah big wet sounds those big cans in the back and it was it was incredibly mm -hmm. loud we had to put a volume knob just for those um 
and then what's his name had the one at Daytona that year that had all loudspeakers in it, and they just had pockets of loud sound. Nelson had, Nelson, had Nelson. all the loudspeakers uh, on it. Um, what did he have? That? I, I think the question is yeah. whether you like loudspeakers or not, because oh, if, yeah. if all you're trying to do is let everyone around you hear it, then loudspeakers are definitely the way to go. Like if you're trying to make that car that you could drive down the road, and it is a rolling sound box that people from on the other side of the street block, whatever, are gonna hear you, that's what loudspeakers are made for. That's why they put them in stadiums, so that you're not sitting next to them, you can hear them. Yeah. Um, if you're more worried about yourself and you want a little bit more refined sound, meaning you, I mean, you want it to sound a little better, because there again, higher quality speakers can handle more power, can thus sound better, I would go with regular speakers, right. so there you go. Um, all right. Uh, do you answer this question about the BMW? Yes. Logic Seven. Yep. Got Perfect. That. Um, also, exactly. You know, just check one of your locals' uh, stereo shops. Maybe they can help you. Maybe it's your product. Some of these products they actually they are not built really good, so that's why causing the noise. Um, check that out. Okay, so all the painters remove what really is strange and the noise gets louder if rear speakers and bass tube are on separate RCAs as usual. But if connect them on same RCA, noise is noticeably lower. Hmm, huh. that is kind of weird. It sounds... That does, that's, that's weird. That sounds like a signal grounding issue. About? Yeah, that we were talking, he was talking about the noise. That's, yeah. that's really weird. It sounds like a signal ground somewhere, maybe a bad radio or, or something along those lines. God, that's a tough one. It's like you got. Yeah, noise like... is one of those things that it's like you just pull everything out and start from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really have like a magic. Ah, oh, it's doing this here. Let's try that. No, it, it's you. Literally, we had a guy uh, Saturday that drove. Saturday. In. Uh, sounds like a bad RCA. It does sound like a bad yeah, RCA. Yeah. Um, or a bad preamp section on, on one of the devices. Correct. We had a guy that drove here. Uh, he was on vacation, stopped mm -hmm. by to have us look at his system. Um, he had an ARC audio amplifier. He had R-type speakers in the car. It's the second car he's had this system in. And he's always had the same problem that at high volumes, the unit would shut off. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things he wanted us to do was do a little bit of tuning as well as, all right, Jason, have a great night, buddy. See you, Jason. Thank you. Um, is noise pisses me off. <laughs> I can empathize. Yeah, it does. It takes yeah. everybody off. But so the problem is, having is you turn the volume up and it would cut off. And he's had this in two cars, mm -hmm. and it's the same equipment. Mm -hmm. And he's actually tried different amplifiers. This is a brand new amplifier. The Arc that he had was a brand new amp. And he's like, yep. it's, it's doing this. Well, he never put two and two together because you can meter all the speakers. They all meter four ohms. And Fernando's like, all right, well let's. Because, you know, I was like, Ugh. and Fernando was, all right, well, let's do what you normally do. Let's start with just a pair of speakers on it and see if we can get it to cut off. So we hooked up the front amplifiers, and we could play it loud all day long, no issue. Hooked up the subwoofer. It's there again, no issue. As soon as we connected the rear speakers, within 10 seconds, cut off. I'm like, okay. So we know there's something wrong with the rear speakers. Disconnect one, boom, cuts off. Disconnect that one, hook up the yep. other one, boom, stays on. Turns out, this one six and a half was bad. It's always been bad. It will play at low volumes because the resistance that's coming from it is enough to not affect the amplifier. But as soon as you put some power behind it, the resistance is too much for the amplifier. It shuts the amplifier down, puts it in protect. Mm -hmm. It metered four ohm, it toned, it played, it was internally shorted, it sucks. But that was his problem. Mm -hmm. Now he's had this speaker for like three years and he's gone through countless equipment only to find out this one speaker has been bad the whole time. Mm -hmm. So problems can be very weird in car audio, for sure. All speaker. right. <laughs> um, Fernando, uh, the speaker size for your car is six and a half in the front and four by six is in the back. Um, we actually, we put one uh, rock for power, uh, rock for, I'm sorry, punch. Four by sixes in the back, six and a half in the front, and that was good. Um, so a K2 and a Virtus are really not apples with apples. A K2 is a lot more expensive than a Virtus. Oh, yeah. um, I would probably think the K2 is gonna have more mid bass just because of the price difference between the two. Um, it, as far as the X on the Focal, I believe the X is the newer version. Because you're gonna see, like, um, 
If you're looking on Crutchfield, Crutchfield is selling the older versions, so you want to go to Focal.com slash USA, whatever. Go to the USA site of Focal and see what the current model numbers are for the units. Um, and then there is also a K2 with a bigger tweeter. So you have a six and a half and a bigger tweeter. So there's two component sets there. Thank you, Bismarck. Boys coil hitting the magnet. It, it would be, but it's it's not moving. So it's, I well, think it was the this, boys coil hitting the pole piece. See, at this point, you gotta just take everything out and start fresh, you know? <laughs> okay, this PlayStation is gonna play itself. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, Fox for punch, turn the PlayStation punch. off. Power, big difference. Yeah. Oh, Rockford Punch vs. Power. Um, okay, so Power is the... Okay, if we're talking speakers, Power is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Not a fan of Punch. Punch are what they are. It's, it's, it's the first... It's not Prime. Prime is... We won't even go there. But, you know, Punch is like the, hey, everyone can afford this and buy this and use that. Power is the the better version. Uh, when it comes to amplifiers though, that's where it gets kind of weird. So if you look at a punch amplifier, a punch amplifier is a more developed amplifier, meaning yeah. uh, the power series amplifiers, the bigger ones, those have been sitting there um, not moving, meaning they haven't revved the amplifiers other than minor circuit board here and there just to, to move the amplifier, but they haven't done a rebuild of the amplifier in years because it's a proven technology, mm -hmm. they're a good amplifier. If you want all the cool bells and whistles though, you buy a punch amplifier because the punch amplifier has all the, like the DD1 built into it and all those cool things yeah. because it's a more inexpensive amplifier to build compared to the punch, or compared to the power. Yep. Now where the power did get exciting is with the mini power series amplifiers. Those are an evolved line that have all the cool new features in it that Rockford offers. The reason why Rockford hasn't evolved the power line is for one, that line of amplifiers, there's really not much more they can do to it other than raise the price to put all these cool new features in it and it's not going to improve the performance any just to put a detortion detector into it so why would they do that when you can it doesn't make sense um, but these other amplifiers that are new are are getting all the technology built into them so what would I buy I would either buy a punch amplifier or the mini power amplifiers if it were me yeah. unless I just needed big power in which case the power 2500 or the power 15. 1500 yep is a freaking amazing amplifier or if I just wanted a really big 4 channel like the 600.4 because they don't make the 1000.4 anymore if you could find one that was a bitching amp um okay I can't stop saying like somebody's going crazy <laughs> sorry that's why I don't have one uh well the yes the 2012 795 yeah fit yes so anytime you're doing a Chevy Silverado it doesn't matter what year you're, you're gonna do cutting um, there's always cutting to be done behind the radio. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we've got a video up showing you that one. We've done a ton mm -hmm. of Silverados. But yes, it will work. There will be some cutting. It's okay. It's all behind the dash and it can still all go back to factory. Uh, for the Toyota, it uh, depends if you have the uh, JBL pack, system. Pack deck or best case. Probably case. you have the 2 ohm speaker. If yes. you don't have the JBL system, it's a regular 4 ohm. More than likely, yeah. 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 All right. So. The easiest way to check is if you do have rear speakers in the car. Yeah, open the trunk Toyota. and look at the it's rear speakers. Toyota speaker. Tundra. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Like, Never no. mind. No. Never mind. You gotta. You In which case, it. buy the Focal Perfect Fits and call it a day. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, should I be losing my low end 2030 hertz as I turn up my low pass filter at 80? I get better 40 50 hertz at lower ends um you're probably not losing it ed it's just the other frequencies are getting so much louder that it's going away because it shouldn't be uh there there isn't unless you have the subsonic filter turned on or the amplifier has an active subsonic filter which i don't think i've ever seen mm -hmm. a subsonic filter is a high pass filter for the subwoofer so for example uh, amplifiers that say subsonic filter you turn it on it's usually a variable between 15 to 30 hertz it's designed to actively cross over the low the the high side of the uh, subwoofer so that it doesn't try to place frequencies that you can't hear anyways uh, thus making the amplifier more efficient so I don't, I've never really seen an amplifier that has an active, it might though because stranger things have happened that as you turn up the crossover it moves the subsonic filter with it. That would be really weird. My guess would be 
as you're as you're turning up the crossover that 80 hertz or which would be 60 hertz would, would probably it's, it's getting so much louder that these you can't hear anymore all right that would be Gregory. My guess. Uh, Gregory, check packaudio.com okay, so and you, you can go. find uh, the dash kit that we use uh, in there. Yep. Also, uh, is there any it's there any under under seat sub amp combo? Would you rather have power? It's worth. I don't know what kind of car your wife has, um, but they, 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 I never I never a fan of the under seat power subs, man. All right, so. so if you uh, can put at least the rock for the p310 the p312 ooh. that will be the best the best move would you rather have power or dsp and sub amp i would rather have power not gonna lie what I, ada was asking would you rather have power or dsp and a sub amp uh there you go mel thanks um i would rather have power thank you mel i, I don't i don't i would rather have power because I, I can always add a dsp or dsp i built into the sub amp i, I you know, because you could do a DSP and a sub amp, so, you know, I, I mean, yeah. realistically, I'd want both, like, the kicker amplifiers yeah. that have all the fun toys, mm -hmm. um, but if I had to choose one feature in a sub amp, I would want it to be powerful, because there's no substitute for power, and I can't, I can't use a, an EQ or a DSP to help power, you know? I yeah, no, 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 I mean, it's just quality. Phase is DSP, one thing, that would be know, like phase is one thing you know obviously uh, like all the phoenix gold have adjustable phase on them uh so that you know if you're having a phase issue you can move that i'm curious dean so expect to call from me tomorrow if i can remember what it was i wanted to talk to you about victor yeah i'll, I'll get you a buzz i just i it was earlier today and my memory just goes so more than likely it'll pop back in my head at some point and i'll uh i'll see if i can yeah i just i forgot what it was i wanted to talk to you about um the amp is for amplifying power. Yeah, power. It's all about power. So, what has been the worst nightmare job you guys have done? You know, it's not so much like a specific job. It's a specific problem. So, the like, like for example, um, one of the things that's really hard to, to work with is which we had today, and I, and I hate it for multiple reasons. Mainly because. You know, if you come in and you have an issue with something we've done, like a product issue or an installation issue, uh, let's say in this case the speaker was cutting out. Um, I, I want to fix it. I want to know what it is, but there's only like so many things it could possibly be. And once you've checked all those and it's still, or in this case, I have a problem. You come in and the problem isn't there, meaning it's not doing it, it's not having a problem, it's working 100% of the time. We talk to you, you say it does it when I do this, we replicate that and we still can't replicate the problem. Mm -hmm. That for me is the worst thing ever because uh, you've taken the time to come here, which means we know there's a problem. We just can't do anything to replicate the problem. Yeah, yeah. So now what do we do? So uh, do we like pull parts out and part new parts in? Sometimes no. that is the answer, but usually it's a bad answer. Yeah. Um, so to me, those are the most frustrating things is when we can't replicate the issue. Now, when we can replicate the issue, great, because it's then awesome. we, it's yeah. like, yeah, we know, boom, we can fix it and we can move on from there. But. That's what sucks. Uh, dirty cars? No, dirty I don't think dirty cars. Car. Dirty cars? No, no. It's always no. He's right. No, dirty cars are frogs. It's the frogs. I hate frogs. Nah, Although I just, I, I, I just ordered an audio frog shirt. Did I tell you about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got an audio frog. Oh, okay. Shirt so for me, dirty cars, it's always gonna be a dirty car. It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, we can deal with that. But like issues like that, that we can figure it out. I mean, it's not like that we cannot figure it out. It's just like we try and it's not doing it. It's yeah. frustrating. It's yeah. just like. Uh, not saying it happens, just not happening while it's in my shop. Yeah, you know, but uh, what we typically do is once we have an idea of what the problem is, then we try to, to talk to the customer and, and say, hey, listen, these are the things we need you to check for us because you're obviously in the car more than we are. So do these things and then we can narrow down to what the problem is. Yeah. Um, like our, our buddy with the Camaro, uh, he was having that problem and it turned out to be an RCA. Yeah. And, and it was like, weeks of of moving things around before yes. i was like yeah it's this it's this one piece it's mm -hmm. you know but we were we were it was it sucked but it was yeah. like okay wait a minute we've done this we've done that we've done this we've done that and it, it, okay let's just it's the same problem yeah. like like the noise that you have you have to start like here there yeah. there and start yeah. moving forward yeah as you change and stop 
So, uh, have you guys ever turned down a job because the car was so dirty? No. Uh -uh. Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, no. Because Paul doesn't have to work on the cars, so he, don't so care. he doesn't care. <laughs> now, we have turned down jobs that are just silly, meaning they don't make any sense. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Yeah, but like for dirty cars, dirty, what we do is yes. grab gloves and yeah, start taking everything out, you know? And like, what are you going to do? What Nothing. are you going to do? Exactly. But, you know, we, we've turned um, down jobs just for me, they're, they're silly. For me, I like the 911 videos. That I we hate have it. to redo it I because, hate you know, videos. I like to just make it better. But sometimes it's like, I don't want to do it. Uh, one more question. If you had to choose 28 hertz tune sub box or 37, I would choose 37. I'm not gonna lie, I'd go 37. Uh, I've hey, yeah, why not, man? Before. Yeah, okay, so for those of you obviously know that I run, you've asked before what kind of shoes Salis. I use. I just happened to get a couple pairs in today that work doing, because buddy? these things wear out pretty fast. This is what's called a Newton. For those of you guys that have wondered what I run in, and these guys right here are what make this shoe special. Um, not because it's on me, as my daughter would say, whatever. Uh, it's a two mil sole, which means it's super flexible. Uh, but this is the landing pads. So as you come down, you land on these guys instead of, you never land on your heel. That's how you screw up your see. knees and hips. But so um, the other thing too is buy multiple pairs. Don't buy just one. I just like the colors, man. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, like it's very Seahawks. Brazil. It's very Brazil. Like uh, they're out of Colorado. Seahawks shoe. Well, it's funny is like because it. all my shirts are this color and all my yeah. shorts are this color by pure accident because this is the color they're using right now for right. this particular version of the two mil. Um, but these are what I run in. Yeah. Uh, I've tried the clouds. Those were okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but these these are just better um, yeah. for, from my style of running. Uh, so there you go. Awesome. Nice. Oh, Luis, say hi. Hey, Luis. What's going on? Hey, from Portugal. That's Luis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Happy. Oh. Oh, Mel's riding his bike again, I think, too, because it's apparently not cold in Texas. Oh, Having cool. while icy is on how fast you drive in uh, Pine Ridge State. Okay, yeah, huh? What do you guys uh, think about the Tweak ADA? Um, right now, okay, so as far as the Tweak goes, I'm going to buy one of those uh, <laughs> I, because I want to see who? Um, I want to buy one of the 88s because go yeah. Cowboys. That was, that was. Mel, you and Adam need to get was, together. He was sweating. The Saturday when they they playing, yeah, I know it. Uh, uh, anyways, I'm gonna buy a Tweak 88 so that I can kind of play with it and be able to answer that uh, questions on that more. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know yet. Do you bring Alexa? And you're running? No, I don't. I have no Alexa while I'm running. Um, I have an Apple Watch, and I use that, and it's the one with the cell phone built into it, so that uh, I don't have to carry my phone. Uh, and you can store music on it, and I got my headphones, and I just go, which I'm going to go do it in a it's couple a minutes after this. That's right. It's a perfect bi biking oh, weather. Oh, biking Not weather. bikini weather. Uh, that was biking like bikini? Weather. Uh, right now, it's kind of, it, it got a, we're having a cold spell right now, so I'm not looking forward to running tonight as much as it has been. Um, I will say this the other day, uh, sorry for running our athletic talk with Five Star Car Zero. The other day, uh, last weekend when I went out, it was 80... Like 88, 89 with 92% humidity mm -hmm. in December or January. It, it sucked. It was like, God, this is terrible. Um, so, yuck. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Thoughts on kick panel pods in general? No, they're good. I have, kick panels are cool. Um, uh, yeah, anything like there them. to get Apple CarPlay in 2014 Camaro? My link. You don't think the GMC uh, what Jeff did? Yeah, made? Jeff did. Yeah. Probably. Um, I don't know the name of the company. I don't know what the name of the company, but definitely something out there that you can find to get Apple CarPlay in your car. Um, yeah, what, there's a company out there that buys and remods and mods the factory units to fit back in. Yeah, um, that's right, Joaquin. Um, yeah, and they're expensive. They're super expensive. I think he paid. It was almost like two grand for that system we put in for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, Focal Access Components, awesome. You'll love them for your Jetta. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would recommend is that if you're not gonna do them with power, don't do them. You're gonna need power for no, those. No, I think, I, think I think I remember him. Yeah, he said he's, he's just 50, 50 watts by four. That's it. Uh, as long as just it's running, as long as it's an amplifier with. power, then you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll send you my 288. Okay, I'll take one. Um, yeah. 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 Sure. Um, 
All right, guys, that brings us to an hour. All right, yeah, my Tweak 88. I'll take oh. it. Um, I'll pay for shipping. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I want to get a Tweak 88 so that I can play with it yeah. and uh, do Let basically the same thing like we did with the um, with the Alpine. I feel that's going to be more and more fun How much to power? this year. My fader isn't working with my current wire harness. Uh, that's because you have a Toyota T02. T02. Uh, no, T1. you're not going to get fader. Okay. Uh, Gene, you're not going to get fader because you have a JBL system. JBL only uses front and uh, front, left, and right. It's a two-channel system, meaning it doesn't uh, because it has an outboard amplifier. All that's coming out of the factory radio is left and right going into that factory amplifier. It uses a digital, uh, meaning when you do balance and fader, it would do it digitally between the radio and the amplifier. So it would tell the amplifier to fade to the rear, tell the amplifier to fade to the front. It is not getting a true, not that there even such a thing. It's not quadraphonic sound, but the reason why you don't have a fader. It's because there was never one from the factory other than in the amplifier, which it is not replicating. The model you have should give you that same goofy fader. Uh, it usually sounds really weird and doesn't work all that often. Uh, Pack does not give you any fader control whatsoever in that because they realize it's not made to be there. Um, but that's why you have no fader. If you would like fader, then what you'd want to do is... Um, disconnect the rear speakers and possibly hook those up to a small amplifier and then mm -hmm. use the rear RC outputs to go into that amplifier. You can't hook them up to your deck because they're too ohm and your deck won't like that. Nope. So um, that's that and that's all right. why uh, I love you guys. What yeah, do you got? I know for Brian, Brian real quick, that will be enough with the radio that you have right now, the Kenwood. Uh, later on if you want to add an amplifier you don't have to change the speakers because the foca they take the, All right, the so, power right so bubba says the i data will do that so yeah that would make sense because the i data will control the factory amplifier better than the other two so All pick right, up guys. an i data harness if you really want your fader go to i data all right guys that brings us to the end of the show uh teespring slash store slash five stars the place you can pick up the new shirts i think i put one in like 15 bucks so if you guys want a shirt for under 20 bucks shipped Go there, pick it up. Yeah, they started the uh, so year work shirt. with the um, five-star shirt. There you go. Something to spend that uh, leftover Christmas money on. Yeah. DNF Tool Drawer is a place where you can find all the cool tools we use. And Patreon is a place where you can go to support the show and get the only version of the video podcast that is available to you. We're going to uh, refresh the podcast this year for 2019. We've got a couple in the can that we need to get out for you guys. We're going to put it on a calendar, so we're getting that, we're, we're going to structureize it this year so that it's out on this date and it's out on that date, so everything will be cool there, but you are the only one that's going to get two of those videos. It's been fun. It's been real. Like I said, when we know more stuff about CES, we'll let you guys know, or we'll just wait till Saturday. We'll see how it goes. Cool. Yes, uh, Jen. Jen. Yeah. You're going to get it soon. Yes. I just uh, I just ordered all our shirts, so you'll get yours soon. Yeah. Um, Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on Saturday if we don't see you before then. Bye. Bye.